there are many mathematical situations where uh, what we're looking for is just the solution to some equation. Uh, for example, if we were trying to find the critical point for this function, which is, I've named g, um, if we're trying to find the critical point of this function, well, we can tell that geometrically, just looking at the graph, we can tell it's about right here. But to actually find where this critical point is, there's a certain equation that we would have to solve. So we know a critical point is just where the derivative is 0. So we can calculate a derivative of this function. It's going to be cosine x minus x, it looks like. And then set this equal to 0. So to find this critical point, we need to solve this equation, right? as is so often the case. Ultimately, the, uh, some problem comes down to solving an equation. Um, but you know, this equation, I mean, there's no obvious way to, to solve this equation. I mean, usually when x shows up in two places in, in an equation, to solve it, you have to somehow collapse the two occurrences of that uh, variable x down into 1 uh, and then isolate the x. But with x showing up inside of a trig function and outside of a trig function, there's no obvious way to sort of collapse the two occurrences of x down into 1. And in fact, it's not just that there's no obvious way, it's that there actually is no way at all. So we're kind of stuck on the algebraic front. We really aren't going to be able to solve this equation exactly. So the best we can do really is to come up with an approximate solution. So let's, uh, let's see if we can come up with a good way to find an approximate solution for this equation. Well, notice that one way to interpret what we're looking for with this equation is that we're looking for x-intercepts of the function g prime, which is, again, cosine x minus x. And I've got a graph of that function right down here. Again, this is g. OK, so to solve this equation, what we're looking for really is uh, x-intercepts for this function, which you know clearly there's one right here. Um, and you know a time-honored tradition of coming up with an approximate solution to some equation, or in this case, an approximate x-intercept, is to basically guess uh, what this x-intercept might be, guess the x-coordinate of this x-intercept, and then come up with some sort of systematic process to make your guess better and better. And you know, there's lots of possible uh, estimates for a first guess of, of what this x-intercept might be. Um, just to, uh, for my own reasons, I'm going to make a really bad guess at first, which is I'm going to guess that maybe this x-intercept is about 0. Now, it's not particularly close to 0, of course. Using 1 half would be better, or maybe even 3 quarters would be a much better first guess for an x-intercept. But that would make the picture that's, um, that I'm about to draw so small that we couldn't see it. So. Uh, just to make things kind of visible, I'm intentionally choosing a first guess that's actually not a great first guess. OK, but no matter what your first approximation is for uh, the x-intercept of this function, so here I'm guessing x equals 0, you probably want to improve that guess somehow. right? And there are a number of ways to improve this guess. I mean, since we're staring at a graph, there, uh, we sort of have an unfair advantage, right? Um, if we're trying, if we're say trying to program a computer to execute some process to improve this guess, we can't tell the computer to just look at a graph because what does that even mean? Um, but you know, we have all of these tools having to do with tangent lines available to us because we just learned a bunch of calculus. So maybe we should think about what the tangent line at this point on the graph that we that was that came from our first guess for uh, the x-intercept. Maybe we should look at what the tangent line looks like here. And the tangent line looks like this. Well, one thing that I notice about this tangent line is that if you look at the x-intercept of the tangent line, it actually looks like it's closer 
to the actual x-intercept of the graph than our original guess was. Right? That's way over here. Our original guess was way over here at zero, but um, the x-intercept of this tangent line is way over here. It looks like a little bit bigger than one, but that's closer to the actual x-intercept than our original guess. So that seems like a, a pretty nice, a pretty nice way to improve our guess. We can just follow the tangent line down to its x-intercept. So let's figure out uh, where that is. So to find the slope of this tangent line, we have to take the derivative of this function. So this is actually a, a second derivative. So the slope of the tangent line on g prime is given by g double prime. And g double prime is, looks like it's going to be minus sine of x uh, minus 1. And we want the slope of the tangent line at x equals 0, because that's where we're drawing this tangent line. So let's plug in 0. Sine of 0 is 0, so we get minus 1. All right, now we can write down the tangent line at this point. This point on the graph that is produced by our first estimate is uh, 0, comma, g prime of 0, right? We can find the y coordinate of this point just by plugging this x value into our function. Uh, and uh, g prime of 0 looks like it's going to be um, 1 minus 0, so that's 1, which looks right. It looks like this is at height 1. So now we have this point and this slope. So we can write the equation of this tangent line. Uh, it's y minus our, our y coordinate equals the slope times x minus our x coordinate, which is 0. Okay, uh, so if we put this into slope intercept form, we get y equals, let's see, minus x plus 1. Now remember what we were going to do to find our, our better <laughs> approximate for the x approximation for the actual x-intercept is find the um, x-intercept of this line. Right? The x-intercept of this line is a better approximate approximation for the actual x-intercept of the graph than our first guess was. So to find the x-intercept of this line, that's where y is 0, so just plug in y equals 0 and we get x equals 1. Okay, so my, pic my picture is actually off a little bit. The actual value of the x-intercept of this tangent line is actually 1, like this. Okay, so our new approximation for uh, the x-intercept of this function, g prime, is x equals 1. Right? That's the one we just found. All right, well, now that we found a better approximation for this x-intercept, why don't we make this approximation even better? We can, ho right, hopefully we can improve this approximation because it still looks not super close to the actual value of the x-intercept for g prime. So how could we make this approximation even better still? Well, why don't we do this whole thing again? So let me get rid of some of the extra writing that I have lying around here. Okay, we have this new best approximation at x equals 1. Um, so why don't we go to the corresponding point on the graph, which is up here. This is the point 1 comma g prime of 1. And then why don't we draw the tangent line on the graph there, and then find the x-intercept of that tangent line. You can see that if we do that, our new, new best approximation is actually very close to the actual value of this x-intercept. So, you know, the first step going from 0 over to 1 was a little better, but not still not great. But it looks like if we do this one more time by uh, following the tangent line at our x value down to the x-intercept, it looks like we're going to get a very good approximation for uh, for this for what the actual value of this x-intercept is. Now the nice thing is we've already done some of the calculation, right? We already know what g double prime is, 
So the tangent for the for the tangent line at x equals one, right? We need g double prime of one, and that's what minus sine of one minus one. And now sine of one, that's not, remember we have to be in radian mode here. Uh, sine of one, one is not a nice angle. One radian is a pretty messy angle. So the best we can do when we evaluate this is actually use a decimal approximation. Um, so let me make sure I'm in radian mode and let's do negative sine of one minus one. I get minus 1.84147 and let's, let's stop there. Okay, so we're kind of forced to use a decimal approximation here just because this is a messy value. There's nothing we can do about that. Um, we're also going to need to know g prime of one, right? What this y coordinate is here. Uh, g prime is cosine x, so cosine one minus one. And for that one as well, we have to, the best we can do is a decimal approximation. So cosine of one, minus one. This is about minus 0 0.45970. Okay, now we can write down the tangent line at, uh, at this spot, since we have the slope and we have the y-coordinate and the x-coordinate for that spot. So we get y minus the y-coordinate, which is negative 0 0.45970, equals the slope, which is minus 1.84147, times x minus the x-coordinate at this spot, which is 1. Okay. Now we know we're going to find the, we need to find the x-intercept. Uh, of this line. And we can find the x-intercept, again, just by plugging in y equals 0. So when we do that, right, this y becomes 0. We have minus minus, so that's plus 0 0.45970 equals. And then on the right-hand side, why don't we distribute this slope? So minus 1.84147 uh, plus 1.84147. And then, oops, I'm missing an x right here, x. And then, let's see, let's move this over here, move that over there, and then divide by this coefficient. So we're going to get x equals 1.84147 minus 0 0.45970 over negative 1.84147. Uh, no, when after I move this over, this is actually going to be a plus, not a minus. Okay, so what does this give us? Let's see, 1, 1 1.84147 minus 0 0.45970, all divided by 1.84147. I get 0 0.75036. <laughs> Let's stop there. Okay, so if we look, at, so uh, after just two rounds of this process of finding a tangent line and then following it down to its x-intercept, we're getting something that's pretty close to what sort of our very naive first estimate was for this x-intercept. It looks like it's about three quarters, and after just two steps of this, you can see we are getting something that's about uh, about three quarters. But if we needed an even more accurate estimate for the x-intercept of this function, we could just do this process again. Now, this process is getting us so close to the x-intercept that we can't even really draw the picture anymore. We'd have to zoom in a lot just to see what was going on. But at each step, we're doing the same thing. Right? When, when we have an x-coordinate that is approximately somewhere near our x-intercept, just um, find the slope of the tangent line there, and then find the x-intercept of that tangent line, and that's your new estimate for the, uh, for the x-intercept of that function. This idea is called Newton's method. 
as usual, Isaac Newton was one of the first people <laughs> to get to this particular territory, uh, one of the first ones to figure this out. Although sometimes it's called the newton raphson method, because Newton actually, he didn't quite phrase it this way. Another fellow Raphson did first, although Newton, you know, he did come up with a, a related thing. It just looked a lot more complicated. Anyway. So the general idea here is if we're trying to find a solution to this kind of equation, so something equals zero, in other words, we're trying to find an x-intercept of some function f, and we have some idea of, or some approximate, some initial approximation for what a solution to this equation looks like, in other words, an approximate x-intercept, then we can, we can improve this approximation by finding the tangent line at this x-intercept, which, you know, finding this tangent line will always involve finding a derivative. Once we've found the equation for this tangent line, then we can follow the tangent line down to its x-intercept. And remember, we can always do that by taking the equation for the, uh, for the tangent line and just plug in y equals 0 and then solve for x, right? That's how you find an x-intercept. And when you find that uh, the x-intercept of this tangent line, that is your new approximate solution. So if you do this over and over, so if we call the, the first approximate solution x0, doing this once gives you a new approximation, which we can call x1, and then doing it again will give you a yet newer approximation, which we can call x2. And you can do this over and over again as many times as you want, really, and you get a whole sequence of approximations for the actual x-intercept of this function. Um, so, of course, you can't actually do it over and over again forever because that would take an infinite amount of time. Uh, but you can repeat this process over and over again until the decimal values that it generates uh, sort of settle down and the decimal places that you want to keep stop changing. So you can just repeat this until you get your desired accuracy, until the decimal places just settle down enough. Or you can repeat it some set number of times if you know you have enough computational power to do it five times, then just do it five times and, and take whatever you get.